As the race for the 2024 Republican nomination ramps up, the two presumed frontrunners for the Republican presidential nomination are heading to competing uh, conservative events this week, you could say. Of course, we've got Florida's Governor Ron DeSantis heading to the Club for Growth Conference, where he will be speaking in front of over 100 of the top Republican donors, while former President Trump is headed to CPAC to address the conference tomorrow. Here to discuss this, uh, branding advisor to CEOs and author of Intrabranding, the keystone of corporate agility, Mark Rudolph, and GOP strategist and Newsmax columnist John Burnett. So um, I'm going to ask you this, Mark. Uh, how do you think this unfolds? Uh, I, I don't know if you're a, a Trump supporter, a DeSantis supporter, but how, how do you watch this unfolding? Well, first of all, I don't think that Trump should be attacking DeSantis because DeSantis is not even a declared candidate. Right now, he's a phantom, um, a phantom candidate, a, uh, and and Trump really. Now, having said that, he is going to Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah, matter. it kind of does. He says, "I am a candidate for president of the United States." He's not a candidate. I know he has a book out, and I know he's traveling all around, and he's meeting with over a hundred donors. That's true, <laughs> but he hasn't but, declared yet. And, people but, do and, but things. <laughs> Okay. Look, the th thing is, you have to deal with things as they are. So as soon as DeSantis declares himself as a competitor, then Trump can start uh, competing with him. But right now, well, he's, he's tried it. already, Mark. Would you agree by calling him Ron DeSanctimonious? And uh... I know that, but that's Trump doing the stupid things that he does. And also, DeSantis made a huge mistake by ignoring CPAC with yeah. a huge conservative audience. And if he wants to show that he's a true conservative, he has to appear in front of the conservative audience. Yeah. And he looks yeah. weak in front of Trump by avoiding this conference. Do you agree, John, or do you agree that uh, this is uh, Trump's crowd? So why bother going there and being insulted by the guy who's gonna take the stage tomorrow with the, keystone, the, the keynote well, event? Well, I think uh, DeSantis is actually employing a different strategy, right? Yeah. He's, he, he's already has a certain portion of the CPAC crowd, right? He's trying right. to expand his reach. And I actually agree and disagree with Mark. Uh -huh. I, think, I think it's wise for any political opponent to, to actually discourage war from happening, right? We use that same tactic in the, in the military yeah. strategy, right? If you know someone is going to get, likely to get in the race, right. you want to discourage and actually influence, you know, voters, mm -hmm. you know, way ahead of the, t uh, of the process. So I think that's smart. What's not smart is engaging in, in grade school playground attacks right, that we've seen from President Trump over the years. I don't think that's going to play very well. I think, I think okay. voters are very tired, very fatigued, exhausted from that type of politics, especially when people are suffering. What they want to hear is the vision. And it actually will be construed as weakness. Why? As Mark said, he's not in the race. But two, why are you attacking him? You should be touting your own record. Yeah, well, that's always been a criticism, Mark, of President Trump, especially as he has been so focused on the 2020 election that he hasn't looked forward and said, hey, remember how things were? Here's what I'm going to do. In fact, in 2016, I remember when he ran for office, he would say, when I'm president, here's what I'm going to do. And doesn't he need to get back to that? You're a branding guy. He needs to start branding what he's going to be. Yes, and the thing is, is that we're in a similar situation to, to 16, 2016 when we were in turnaround mode. We were in dire straits. Trump has the ability to hit the ground running. I've done it before, folks. I'm known internationally. I'm known domestically. I had successes all around. DeSantis hasn't had any of that. So Trump has to focus on what he can do to get this this country back on the rails. And again, DeSantis is not in it yet, so he doesn't have to bring up DeSantis's name. He just has to talk about, here's where we are, here's how Biden let us down the path of destruction, and I can right this ship again, and I'm going to do it. I have done it yeah. already, I have the street cred to do it, that's why you should vote for me. Well, Mark, yeah, but if he you're... focuses on that, he can go a long way. But well, Mark, you're doing a better job than he's doing, right? <laughs> That's the problem. Yeah. And, and he has, arguably, he has more baggage now than when he did in 2016, 
right? So the question remains, are voters willing, right, to, to actually carry Trump back to the White House or, or as I like to say, use a forklift to lift him and get him back to the White House. Why? <laughs> because he's heavier. He's got more baggage, right? We all know that his policies worked, but are voters willing to tolerate all the other stuff that comes with it? And we're already getting a preview. Yeah, we've got like 10, well, 15 seconds, Mark, if you could wrap well, it up. Trump does have baggage, but unfortunately, he's expanding that baggage, and it's not going to fit in the overhead rack because he keeps <laughs> adding to it. He needs to True. subtract from it by highlighting his his uh, positive attributes, and All that right. can carry well, him a long well, way. Okay. We're, beyond ba train. we're beyond baggage. It's more like cargo at this point. <laughs> well, this train is leaving the station, gentlemen. We've got to uh, <laughs> depart. Uh, Mark Rudolph, John Burnett, thank you so much.